Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dev Talk. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the reworks going into the next patch. Of course, my name is Dry Bear, and we're going into this Dev Talk here. And my joining me today is going to be our lead designer, Hi-Rez Scott. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So today, we have a very special guest that we're talking about today. And um, not quite sure who it is, but it could be one of the mightiest gods in all Norse mythology. Um, any idea who it is? I think it's the father. The All-Father. All-Father? Yes. It is going to be the All-Father. This is a statue, of course, provided by Hydra's Kelly. Thank you for the awesome prop for today on Dev Talk. We'll put him right there, right there in the center there. Um, so, of course, you know, Odin has had a weird life in Smite, right? I mean, he started out as kind of like this warrior, then he became more of a guardian in like January 2013. Then he became a warrior again. Then he fell off for a long time. Then he became an awesome, one of the best guardians in the entire game, kicking everyone's butt. And then when the warriors got restructured, he got super nerfed and he just disappeared for a while. Has not been picked up. He's been picked up like once or twice, once in the SPL so far. But I mean, what are, what are the challenges of Odin's current kit? The challenges. Well, he's definitely had a very storied career, and, and uh, I think anyone who's been tracking us for a while knows that we've had a kind of a rough time uh, balancing him. Sure. Um, you know, really, whenever we look to uh, to rework a god, um, you know, I think it's actually one of the more challenging things we do because there's a lot of expectations around, uh, you know, basically love for the current kit and what it is, and making sure that you don't want to lose that when you do it. Um, in the case of Odin, you know, a lot of his challenges came around. Um, players having difficulty with his ultimate around. Um, you know, for a time we went through where we were adding a lot of passive bonuses as he leveled up. Um, I think those are things that as we looked at him and looked to do a rework, um, we really saw were, were problematic um, and not and not working very well. Sure, I mean, he kind of had this, this kit where, and, and it's weird, right? Anytime you have a long-standing character that exists throughout the history of the game, especially, you know, in those wild early beta stages where the, the game style can shift wildly, um, he, he was this early on meant to be this auto-attack control warrior who had the attack speed stim. He's got the passive. You can see twice as far as everyone else. He's got the ravens going around. Um, plus, you know, a little bit of the slow. And, you know, he's got the ultimate to keep you inside. But it seemed like more and more we were kind of seeing that Odin was hard to understand as a character because he was, you know, meant to be this auto attacker, but his movement speed was rather slow, his animation is very slow, in fact, notably yeah. the slowest jump in the entire game. Yep, that's true. Um, so, I mean, it seemed like this was a little bit strange, so we, we kind of, you know, changed his numbers a little bit, you know, again, January like 2013, the start of last year, uh, it seemed to be a good fit for him and became more of this guardian, and he's kind of been bouncing back and forth between warrior and garden as a role. I mean, what was the original design for Odin? What did you envision him becoming? Well, you have to remember when we designed uh, Odin initially, we didn't really have a Guardian or Warrior class. Um, so he very much was being built to be a tank, a support tank. Sure. Um, you know, and around the time that we established sort of this divide between the, the physical warriors and the magical guardians, he sort of lost a little bit of his identity. Right. Um, so I think in that situation, he's kind of been fluid and moving back and forth without really settling in one spot. Yeah, it seems like he's kind of just been, you know, in this void transition between the two. And players figure out how they can use him best, and that's the mm -hmm. role he falls in. I mean, that's why he's support for so long, and that's why he was picked up as support, is that he kind of had remnants of this warrior damage style, while also being very tanky. And, of course, the ultimate, uh, you know, I remember the days of the closed beta where you could pick Zeus, Odin, and literally just win every single lane. This was, of course, back when there was no jungle, so it was just two and two. On, it was two on two is what it was. And you could run Odin, Zeus on one lane and just kill it every single time. Uh, those are the good days is back when we had a lot of uh, action but you know as Odin stands right now I mean you're looking to you know kind of fill the needs of the community and, and kind of really realize what Odin can be so how do you begin that process of transition sure you know with with any of these reworks we always start by trying to say you know what what is the most important thing to keep on this god what is okay. the spirit of it the soul of it what do players most identify with the character and and what can we just not lose um, and for Odin, for us, you know, that was really, um, you know, it, it was it was the ring, right? He's well known for the ring. Um, we really enjoy during picks how if you have a team that doesn't have a lot of leaps, Odin's a great counter pick. Sure. Um, so that's something we wanted to preserve. Um, and kind of starting there, we're like, all right, we need to make this ring a lot better. You know, we need to make it work in more situations, and then we need to design the rest of the kit around really allowing that to happen. 
Okay, so the central focus is on that that I, iconic ability or skill set that a character can really bring to the forefront, and then kind of realizing, you know, how do we amplify this in a meaningful way while also making it feel like it it delivers in, in the way that you know people are expecting. You talked a little bit about expectations going into this, so um, you know we can just kind of run through the overall rest of it. I mean, we know as, as you've mentioned that the spears will be remaining, you know, as far as like implementation or the general feel um, aesthetically, it's going to be around the same, you know, it's going to keep that whole ring feel to it. Um, but, you know, we still have, you know, a passive and three other abilities to talk about. So, you know, when you look at Odin's current kit now, and we can go ahead and reiterate for those of you who don't know, his passive, you know, as it stands, of course, before the rework going into the next patch, it will double your minimap vision. So on the minimap, players will have a vision around their character. Odin has doubled that amount, which means he can see twice as far over walls, that kind of thing. And this goes along with the, you know, Odin's ravens flying above him and, and seeing that kind of vision around him. He has uh, uh, the slowest jump in the game, but it has a very large AoE around the same as That's Bastet's right. pounce, uh, allowing him to do decent damage there. Of course, the second ability is Odin's shout, where he invigors his teammates by shouting um, you know, the Asgardian and, and Norse runes come about and they increase their attack speed in AoE. And then, of course, he has the Gunner's Might, where he gets, you know, previously had the, the passives you were talking about. And he would spin in a circle twice, uh, once doing damage, playing a slow, and once doing damage again. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of this kit where you, you get to jump in, you slow them with the Gunner's Might, you pop the Odin Shout for you and whoever else is around, swing your spear a bunch, um, have a bunch of vision and control, and then the spears come down. So, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you kind of like reorganize those abilities to fit more with a, an adjusted ultimate. Well, I, I think that really comes down to figuring out what it was that's not working well about the ultimate okay. and trying to adjust that. Um, you know, we identified several problems. Obviously, the one that people are most familiar with is, you know, you, you sometimes are more of a hindrance to your team than you are a help, sure. right? You'll sometimes trap friendlies inside. You'll sometimes just blot them from getting into the fight. Um, the, uh, you know, one of the other problems is kind of this sort of the chasing around a ring mentality, right? Which is because Odin has to do basic attacks and because he's slow when he does them, um, a lot of times there's a case that you drop the ring and you spend the whole time running around in a circle chasing people, which just wasn't really fun for Odin, and it uh, it just kind of also looked a little bit silly. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Benny Hill so, playing. So that's another thing we looked at. It's like, okay, how can we better work his kit to make it so people are more encouraged to turn and face him and fight him? Um and then really from there it was just, okay, what other cool things could we do to really play off of off of that more um, than we currently are? So. Okay, so we'll walk by this, you know, one by one and just kind of give your general thoughts on, you know, how you felt about it and, and really um, if you if you could talk about it, the direction you wanted to go. So starting off with the passive, right, Birds of Wisdom, it really allows him to kind of see great. And then that's one of the aspects of Odin that kind of makes him as powerful as he could be, right? A lot of times you'll see Odin and, uh, you know, you, you're trying to look for an invade at the beginning of the game and you're trying to kill a lane, right? And then they back off and there's no wards there. You don't know why. A lot of players have this problem, right? Like, mm -hmm. how do they see it? Odin's there, and of course that doubled vision allows him to see. So, what were the challenges with that passive? And do you feel like it, it was successful in the old design? Do you feel like it would need to be changed? I mean, how do you feel that passive fit into Smite? Um, I think it. I think it was successful in a certain way, and we certainly we really like that passive. We think sure. it's a good one. Um, you know, it's one thing that's changing on his kit, but it's something that we want to bring back later on on a different character where we think it will play a little bit better. Okay. Um, so I think in terms of how it is in Smite, we like it a lot. Um, but we think for what we're trying to do with Odin now, it was a little bit out of place. Yeah, it's kind so. of like a Guardian-style passive, yeah. and it seems like he was in that, that transitionary, so this would move him away from it. Um, first ability, lunge, um, slow jump, good, decent damage, actually. Uh, you know, you, Very it high is damage, now, actually, yeah. Uh, the highest level one ability in the game, not the top end, of course, Geb gets that with rollout, but um, the low end, it starts at the highest value, 140 is a huge amount for ability to start at level one, so yeah. he's got this big AoE, slow animation jump, where he just jumps and he smashes and there's birds everywhere. Do you feel like this was successful? I mean, what, what are the challenges about that ability? Um, certainly, I think it was. You know, we, we don't have too many abilities that have that high of, well, really any that have that high of base damage without scaling, especially early in the game. Sure. Um, and, you know, as we went through all the iterations of kind of modifying Odin, that's actually something that we wanted to keep on him because we felt it was very unique, even when we did all the balance patches, um, you know, in the previous months. Sure. 
So. Yeah. So we got that, that that kind of big jump in and splash. I'm here and announcing yeah. his presence and kind of fits the whole uh, Odin style, right? The All yeah. Father has arrived and that kind of thing. It it also plays with the fact, you know, it's it's such a slow jump. It is like the slowest jump in the game. That sure. you know, just having that meaningful impact that felt like you really uh, you know contributed a lot. I think right. was important to it. Well, he's been around for so long that you yeah. know the animations, the sounds of the birds, the rah, that kind of thing. That the sound effects are very you know you know it. Then when he starts that jump, it goes and he smashes. And you know that he's here and it feels. Uh, it's that feeling and, and for those of you who don't know um, the, the feeling and, and the way it's portrayed is actually really big in, in game design and it's something that you know Scott toils over day in and day out in the way that you know this has to feel like it's enjoyable and like it has a, an impact on the game itself so uh, the second ability Odin Shao this is one that probably uh, gets you know as far as like outwardly the most scrutiny as an ability mm -hmm. um, uh, you know of course currently it, it's a shout that increases his attack speed and everyone around him increase, increasing minion attack speed as well and used to be part of a push strat previously so so, you know, what are your thoughts on Odin Shao? Hmm. Um, that was one of the ones that we identified is is something we wanted to change on the new kit. So, okay. um, again, it's we conceptually like a lot being able to uh, you know buff your teammates in different ways, and I definitely got something that we're going to bring back in later. Okay. Uh, but in terms of the direction we're taking his kit, um, it wasn't really fitting, uh, I think, with with what he needed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, again, kind of like that leftover guardian style. That's right. You know, yeah. Bolstering your teammates, helping, giving vision, that kind of thing. So it doesn't really fit with a, you know, a strong warrior that would want to get in there and fight. Uh, last but certainly not least, Gungnir's Might. Now this ability yeah. has actually gone over a lot of changes um, in the history of Odin. Um, it's been you know the same concept, but it's one of those things where you get to see it as um, you know it, it's a good initiation tool, defensive tool. Um, it's been longstanding. I mean, I remember playing Odin in like 2012. We could buy Stone of Gaia and Maxis 3, and he would just, you know, oh, I got damaged, full HP, damaged, full HP, it just has a lot of regeneration on it. Um, previously, and of course with the restructuring of the Warriors, Odin lost a lot of the passive element on that yeah. 3. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on Gungnir's Might as an ability? Um, you know, overall as an ability, we think it's fairly fairly solid. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it does what it does very well with the slow and, uh, and with the damage. Um, there's... Uh, you know, it, it's one of those ones that we actually are keeping. Um, but one of the things we are changing across really all of Odin's kit is, you know, he, for a time, especially before we nerfed him, he had a lot of passive gains from his abilities. And we're kind of, one of the things when we redesign is we want to take a lot of that bloat that he kind of built up on there um, that we had to nerf off and really channel that into, like, one ability he could use that would really kind of give him those benefits but in a more controlled and tangible way. Um, because, you know, as you're gaining, you know, even on his ultimate, you know, physical defense or, or uh, power, um, kind of passively in 10s and 20s and 30s. It's not something that reads very well to you as a player. Sure. Um, so that's something that we kind of wanted to do with him because, you know, Owen's, Owen's a really important character. You know, he's the top of the Pantheon. Right. We want everything to feel very, very uh, kinetic and responsive when you're playing. So. Okay. Well, we've gone through all the abilities here, so let's go ahead and make the final leap, hopping into uh, the match here, and just really show off what's going on with Odin himself. Um, and so you can see right away uh, a little bit of the, the new UI. Spoiler alert here, but um, you can really see, you know, the first thing you spot out, obviously, as a new player, is what is that swirling thing above his, his profile? Like, I mean, th there's this new thing, and of course, we, this was spoiled by uh, Pon Pon a little bit earlier today, and you guys had a time to digest it, but, uh, you know, w you know, what, what is that thing? Well, you know, it's a little strange to start there. I, I feel like we would need to start more with his ultimate and work work into it. You want to you want to start with the ultimate? But, uh, but it's up to you. We can we can go either way. You on know that. what? Let's hook me up. Level everything up here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do it. I know I'm leaving the base. Shut up. Um, so, of course, you can see that just by visually, you can kind of guess at what some of these abilities do. And you can see it still is Odin, very much so. Uh, he's not getting a remodel or anything like that. And you can see by the uh, the art for the abilities that it's very, very similar. Uh, but let's just go ahead and plop this down here and see if anyone notices a major difference with this. So, you know, obviously, these are not the same spears, are they? They don't look like the same spears. They're more ghostly, ethereal kind of, uh, you know, more energy-based spears than they are real spears where they used to be. Um, so this is kind of the immediate. You can see that, you know, I'm running around here, um, I actually uh, can't exit the ring. Uh, these do seem more ghostly, but it's almost as if I could pass through them, but uh, it seems like I can't. Um, so, you know, this this feels like the same ultimate, Scott. And that, is, that, is that a win? Um, it, it is a win for a feel, and certainly okay. for a style, Very good. but there's, there's several really huge differences to this ultimate now. Okay, so yeah. let's go ahead and see if we can't, um, I don't know if it's going to be easy for me to show this off here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do Spawnbot Odin 1, 2. 
So one thing that you can notice, I don't know if I can get him to move or not. Let's do a spawn bot. Uh, uh, Ra T or T1. I don't know if they'll fight or not. They're not gonna fight. There we go. Okay. Not gonna engage. But one thing you can tell. Be able to see these bots. You can see that the enemy can actually pass through this. Um, but there's a spear on top of the friendly Odin here. Um, so, one thing that you can say immediately is that um, allies can no longer be trapped by your spears, which means they, right. can, they can actually travel through the spears. Um, and that's pretty, it's pretty significant, right? Because that means that, you know, you never have to worry about being trapped. And it, it's, it's one of those biggest things. And I actually have a, a video on YouTube called Story of Spear, where I noted who went around trolling me, trapping me inside of spears. But uh, you never had that feeling like, please drop the spears, I need to get out, kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, walk us through the thought process of deciding we want allies to be able to transfer through it, but not everyone can. Sure. Well, I mean, this was probably one of the most requested things on the spears, so it's kind of where we started, um, at least with the playtesting and experimenting. But um, really the thought process is there is that uh, allies can move freely in and out of the spears. Um, Odin and enemies can't. So Odin's still trapped in there. If he wants to exit, he's still going to need to use his leap. But allies can move in and out freely. Now, the second big change really happened as a result of that. Um, for various gameplay reasons, but the second big change is that the spears, um, they no longer block shots from enemies or allies. So it is now a movement restrictor for enemies, but people outside the ring can still fight into the ring. Right, you can see here that uh, the minions will be able to transfer this and put this down. Ra can actually move through the spears. He's trapped. He can actually physically move through it. You can see all of his attacks actually go through here. Um, the minion actually will be able to and you can see when he's inside of it, he can't go through it. But allies can actually just step in and out of the spears at will. Uh, same thing for minions. Um, and projectiles will go through. This means things like Onher's Impale will still travel through the spears and, and push him back and stun him. You can even, you know, stun Odin into the, the spear itself. So, um, um, uh, that would be, um, mm. So one thing that you can notice as well is that um, I don't glow gold. That's right. Now. Yeah, um, you are no longer CC immune while you're in your ring. Right, and so one thing that could happen is that, you know, I can put this down, on her can shoot the impale through the wall and actually impale me to my own spears. Um, and so that's kind of an interesting fact, right? So, you know, with allies being able to travel through the spears and Odin not, I mean, what are the implications there? Rampage. Well, I mean, the implication for allies is obviously that they're they're just never caught in a situation anymore where they're blocked out of the fight or where uh, vice versa they're trapped into the fight. Um, you know, for Odin, the implication and this this will make a little more sense as we go into his kit is that he needs to be really careful about where he uses his leap. Um, well, you know, it, it it does make things a lot more interesting, right? Because you know, previously when the ultimate was like that, it, it meant that you know he has a really powerful team fight ultimate. He's actually able to kind of trap people inside; they can't escape that kind of thing. But it also has that negative aspect. So now you're taking an, uh, an ultimate that is very much team fight oriented, and then removing the downside, the way that you're trapping your teammates inside. So you know, does this right. make Odin, you know, you know, in a way a lot stronger with the ultimate and team fight presence, but also doesn't have to worry about positioning the way that I just put these spears down, they're for me, they're for me getting the kill, and I don't have to worry about my teammates because they'll be able to assist in any way. Um, you could say that. This is definitely a major upgrade to this ability. Um, it's actually one of the reasons why you know, he's not CC me inside and why when we talk about the buffs, all the buffs in the ring have changed as well. Um, it's really a, it's part of a counterbalance to that, that upgrade. Yeah. These animations are very similar here, kind of swinging the spear and that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, we can kind of just go backwards if we if we will and go right into the three here which of course looks very similar to Gunner's Might so I uh, prop up this skill shot here and you can see that it is uh, still a circle around him um, and then we'll go ahead and spin um, and it's exactly the same right so uh, functionally this ability is the same and obviously there, there could be some adjustments uh, therein um, as the details would be released but you know you mentioned that you liked the fact that you know Gunner's Might existed as very iconic for Odin is there you know a, a purpose to keeping it as is? Um, I, I think it just still worked with the kit. I mean, that's the main reason of keeping it as is. Okay. Well, of course, um, go ahead and show here that it actually does still have a slow component. Uh, actually, uh, there was a change. You know, he doesn't get uh, passive HP 5 anymore. Right, so no passive yeah. involved with the uh, 3 anymore. But you can see it still does have that slow effect at their feet, um, meaning that you can actually get in close and, and, and slow people down. Um, and we can go ahead, uh, for troll reasons, skip the 2 and go into the 1. Sure. Uh, so the 1, <laughs> um, as you mentioned, another iconic thing for Odin in the way that it feels like you've arrived in the team fight, big jump in, uh, big splash, a lot of noise, and you can make this big splash here. So, you know, you can see that as it pop up the, tool t uh, the uh, targeter here, it's uh, pretty much exactly the same, a um, little bit updated in the color, but definitely, uh, you know, the same idea here. So, you know, you mentioned that it's pretty iconic. Is this something that you wanted to keep the same? Um, I think we did, yeah. yeah. 
still very long animation. Mm -hmm. uh, landing on top and killing that, that pesky robot there. So you can see, you know, the three is exactly the same. The, the one is exactly the same. The spears are, are greatly increased um, in, in effectiveness and usage. Um, and so, you know, the passive uh, probably there is a, and There is an enemy debuff while they're in the spears. Yeah, well. that's right. That's yeah. right. And you can, uh, are we comfortable talking about that? Uh, I guess we can wait if we're trying to yeah, well, we be a little coy to. with I mean, it. It's up to you. I mean, if it's going to change or not. And we can, you can just go through the, the details here and just give the general idea, right? Yeah, general uh, idea. Okay, so the general idea sure. for Inside of the Spears, uh, for those of you who are curious, um, you know, it used to be Odin got a bunch of protections. He was CC immune and, of course, had a little bit of physical power increase while inside of the Spears. So though those have changed completely. Um, the, That's right. The idea here of the Spears is that I put it down and no longer have CC immunity at all. Uh, but what it's going to do is actually have healing reduction, which means that enemies right. caught in the spears will not be able to heal as effectively. Um, and also, it has a attack speed reduction, so it's the inverse of his Odin Shout. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, talk us through the process of deciding what happens while he's in the spear. What happens? Yeah, why is there a healing reduction? Sure. Why is there an attack well, speed reduction? Well, the healing reduction was more around, you know, as you'll see when we talk about his passive, there's a, a big importance on Odin of trying to actually kill people while they're inside his ring. Um, and you have a lot of people that could easily counter that, such as robbing down his heel wise inside the ring, things along that line. That we wanted to sort of add a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more of an edge and a fear factor to it. Okay. So. Keeping it aside and using that effectiveness there. So hopping next into the passive. The passive is that swirly thing you can see above his head here. I'm sure a lot of you have made a lot of guesses at the passive. Um, you know, and it, you know, it kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier when we were mm -hmm. saying, don't, you know, it's easier to talk about the ultimate first. So, uh, That's right. You know, yeah. Let us, I mean, what, what, what is a passive and, and why, is it, why is it part of the kit? Um, so Odin's new passive is that anytime someone dies, an enemy dies inside his ring, whether Odin kills them or someone else does, he gains a permanent passive benefit. Although, conversely, if Odin never dies inside his ring, he actually loses one stack of that benefit. So he's actually going to go ahead and have a, basically a pseudo built-in Heartseeker kind of for That's his right. kit there. So uh, if anyone, and he doesn't have to get the kill. It, it, it's That's just right. More it has to be God. Someone, an, enemy God. an enemy dies inside of his ring, and then inside of his domain, and he gets increased, um, some bonus stacking up and increasing his damage there. So, uh, But of course, it has that built-in factor where if he dies, he'll lose part of that bonus. And so he has to stack mm -hmm. it back up again. And so kind of this whole thing where he wants to get in the fight, uh, trap him inside, and get those kills immediately. But, you know, with this new increased ultimate and, and the way it's play and the fact that it doesn't trap allies and, you know, has, you know, debuffs inside of it, uh, it certainly plays well into that pass in the way that he's going to get stronger the more times he kills people inside of his ring. That's right. Okay, well, Odin definitely getting a bit of a facelift there. Uh, so finally, last but certainly not <laughs> least here, the one that I have trolled chat long enough with, um, the two is actually going to be um, the, the brand new ability, uh, completely reworked. It is not the shout anymore. Um, so, you know, Walk us through why the shout didn't work and what best would fit into the kit we've talked about so far. Um, you know, it's, it's not that the shout totally didn't work. It certainly did some interesting things and things that we want to see put on uh, perhaps a little bit more of a support-oriented kit in the future. Um, it was really just finding something that played off of what we felt uh, was kind of the most core to Odin. And, and, and that really came around, uh, you know, the ultimate and then to a lesser degree his leap. Mm -hmm. That leap presence of him arriving in the battle and, and doing all that damage. Um, and, you know, because he's a warrior, we were also looking for something that had um, sort of that multi-directional feel of either being protective or being damaging, sure. right? which is kind of what, what we do with warriors. We want them to be able to build multiple different directions and have a lot of options. Um, so this just kind of runs along with that, that, uh, that direction. Right. So, I mean, immediately yeah. first thought is that, you know, he's losing protections on his ultimate. His three no longer has HP five, um, and of course, he doesn't have vision on his passive anymore. So all the guardian elements that are still there, the things that make him tanky, things that make him durable, are not involved. And so, you know, if he's not going to be this this tanky kind of uh, person, the question is, you know, what would it, it fill, you know, going forward? And so, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and press it, and then sure. people can kind of make their yeah. conjectures um, as they see fit. But pressing the two, here we go. First off, you can see this is array here. There's birds going around me. Um, the birds fly away there, and it's the little timer that goes around the, uh, the the waistline there. So, just a full disclosure: uh, what this does is when you press it, um, it actually gives you a shield, um, a little a shield that will shield you against um, damages. And of course, um, the little bubble there. And then, of course, as that little timer ticks down at the end of it, it explodes. Um, so the idea here is that he has, you know, some kind of defensive ability um, that can also be used for offense. And so he has this kind of pseudo built-in, like you were mentioning, he can decide whether he wants to be defensive, he wants to be offensive. Um, that kind of thing. So um, if I go over here and actually walk over, you can see exactly what happens when this does end. You can see, boom, there goes the damage. It explodes, um, fill, uh, killing off the raw there. So um, that kind of thing. So, you know, we've got the full kit. 
He's got uh, a, a strong jump, good AoE damage. Second ability is defensive and offensive at the same time. Uh, third ability has got a good slow component to it, mm -hmm. um, and a, a, you know more utility kind of thing. Um, passive is more damage, and of course the ultimate is multi-use. You can use it in team fights for single kills, that kind of thing. So uh, you know, I, I, it's amazing. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, this is a, a, a mechanic that we haven't really had so far. Um, so I mean. A shield that also damages it is, is very powerful in a lot of situations. Yeah. So the, the interesting thing about that is it does damage based on the health remaining on the shield. Mm. Um, so if you're using it as a shield, uh, you know, in the ring at the end of, uh, if someone's attacking you anyway, if they actually turn around to fight you, um, it's not actually dealing any damage to them if they drop it. Um, but, you know, because of the timer, you can also use it to initiate by activating it early, you know, counting down your head and leaping in at the right time to have it go off uh, along with your leap. So it kind of adds to that really powerful burst presence he can have if he's That's initiating right. into the lane. So you can pop that up. Of course, it is, since it is duration-based, it means you can time it out pretty easily and figure out how you want to handle using it. But definitely a very powerful ability with a lot of uses on it. And, uh, one thing to note as well is that you know, it, it's this, it's this mostly multifaceted ability in the way that you know, it has a lot of upsides, a lot of downsides, a lot of utility mm -hmm. in the way that Obviously, if it's based on how much HP is left on the shield, this means that if you uh, pop it and then someone is still targeting you, they're going to be able to eat through it and then you have no damage. That's and so, right. you know, the damage going down on the other abilities, uh, it, it would have to either be spread well enough or it just comes out of the fact that Odin now has to be more thought of as a damage dealer and you have to figure out how you want to handle doing that because obviously if you go up against someone, you pop the shield, they blow the shield, you don't have any burst. That's right. So very interesting aspects there, and of course, uh, since, you know, if you trap yourself, and it's one of those things where Odin only has downside to himself, you know, he pops the ultimate, he can't get out, his teammates can leave willy-nilly, I mean, guys, I'm trapped, okay, see you later, he actually has to jump out of his own ring, and so that's the kind of thing where, you know, no longer is he ruining the, the lives of his teammates with a bad ultimate, he's just ruining his own. <laughs> that's right. Very interesting there. That's actually, uh, that particular feature is one that we actually had in very late. Initially we did say Odin could leave his own ring, but we found, uh, we found there was a lot of um, really powerful things you could do with that. It was a little bit too strong. Um, and we liked him having to really preserve his leap if he wanted to. Kind of that mentality of, you know, go all in for the kill or, uh, or save it to try to get out if you think you're in trouble. There's a lot of implications here, especially you know for certain lanes. Right, you go into the solo lane. You can sit behind. Say these are the minions here that have just met. Um, just for quality's sake, let's make them face the right way. Uh, the minions have met in the solo lane. Pop this up. Wait for the opportunity. Walk forward and jump in. And of course, you'll jump in and blow up and, and kill the whole wave. And that's kind of how his clear goes. Seems to be uh, pretty safe. Now, uh, his three notably doesn't do anywhere near the amount of damage. Two, so it's actually very low there on damage numbers. And just so you guys know, this is me hitting level four robot with no items at automatic level 20. So the numbers here are very hard to kind of understand how they're supposed to be. But just in general, the three doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So this is really just, you know, you pop in the two. You see the respawn uh, coming in here. You jump in, get the burst damage from the thing. Pop the three for the slow and then start whacking at them. Of course, extra damage for the passive. And, you know, if, they, if they're starting to get away, pop the, the ultimate down now. CC immunity is gone, which means you can be knocked up, you can be stunned, you can be hit by anything. I mean, projectiles go through, so like an Ool axe can fly through the spears and stun you while yeah. you're in it. A hobble can knock you up. I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen to you while you're in the spears. This is not a one-way ticket uh, to getting a kill, right? This is just you have to be very careful with how you're going to you know, time this thing out. Certainly. Yeah, so a very powerful kit there. So we're going to go ahead and open it up a little bit in chat if you guys want to answer some questions uh, as we come down to this one. So uh, definitely a, a, a very different kit, uh, more of a warrior-esque style as you do see now. So kind of leave that open to the public. But this will be coming in the next patch, guys. This is the new Odin. Um, go ahead and give us your feedback and any questions you have available. Uh, maybe even pop off that subscriber mode to see what people think about it so far. But um, that is going to be it because... I don't know. I mean, overall uh, reaction seems like he's going to be a very fun to play, um, highly engaging, um, yeah. able to kind of like uh, show, strut his stuff in, in very powerful ways, right? He can. He can, seems like he can play, play jungle. It seems like he can go into the solo lane, um, even in, in the mid lane occasionally with the amount of clear that he has. And uh, it seems like that we're preserving that whole Odin has strong counters. Um, he can counter people very effectively, right? Like you were saying, if they don't have any leaps or anything like that, you can counter them with this ultimate, trap them inside, um, while not being hugely detrimental or complicated to use, right? So, yeah, a very elegant design. Thank you. <laughs> no. um, you know, we, we really hope that we preserved enough of what people really love about Odin sure. um, and kept the feel of him while really trying to just uh, make the kit more fun to play. Uh, more fun to play and something that, that could obviously be, uh, you know, much more viable um, in more situations, so...
Definitely. If you guys are looking for the new Arachne, that will be taking place tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on the second Dev Talk. It's the first time we've ever had two Dev Talks in one week, but with so many changes, we kind of have to show off the, uh, the new gods very progressively there. Um, so hopefully you guys are enjoying the new Odin. Standing tall there in the middle of the screen, uh, nodding his head in approval here as that's all good to go. But you guys have seen the full kit there for Odin. If you're looking for details on scaling, numbers, cooldowns, mana costs, all that kind of stuff, really what his kit really is, uh, not from the conceptual level, uh, tune in for patch notes there on Friday. Friday, of course, will be 4 p.m. Eastern, right after the conclusion of the EU Pro League uh, from 1 to 3.30 there. So definitely tune in, guys, on Friday. Tune in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern uh, with Scott and Hyres Bart to talk about Arachne. We know Bart has a big feeling in his heart for the little bug, so... We'll see if it is now becoming what he had hoped it had been um, all along. So you guys finally get your reworks you've been asking for, it, and we'll be delivering that information going into tomorrow and the rest of the week. So stay tuned to Smite Game. After this, of course, will be uh, a couple streaming um, options, then going into 7 p.m. Uh, EDT, uh, as well as uh, a little bit later, it's going to be uh, 12, uh, I believe it's 1, 1, 1 a.m. Uh, CEST is going to be the start of the uh, NA Pro League.